Welcome back to today's uh, block revision class. And today we are looking at the cash flow statement, the specifically for the question of the last sitting, the specifically for the question of last sitting, that is April 2024. Question, uh, question four. April, this is April 2024. 2024. Question four. The cash flow statement. The cash flow statement. Remember, the cash flow statement is being governed by the IAS. It is being governed by accounting standard IAS 7. So don't forget that it is being governed by standard IAS 7. Here with me, we have a format for the cash flow statement, which we start with the profit before tax. We start with the profit before tax. And then we add back or we do adjustment. This adjustment is non cash flow. Uh, adjustment. Number one, we have depreciation, interest paid. Remember, interest paid, the accountant has already less in the income statement. So we add back when preparing the statement of cash flow. We have the loss on disposal. We have the loss on disposal. We add the loss on disposal. If we have the profit on disposal also, we less. So we add this, we less this one. That brings us the first uh, part of the operating. Uh, operating uh, activities. Remember, the cash flow statement, they have three segments. They have three segments. We have the operating activities, the investing activities, and the financial activities. Those are three segments of uh, the cash flow. So after that, you will have to come to the working capital where we have the inventory receivable payables, and then you will get a gross cash flow from the operating activities, less interest paid and then to less any tax paid if, we, if there is any so that we can arrive at the net cash flow uh, from operating activities then we go to the second segment which is investing activities investing activities you can have the cash paid to acquire an asset cash received from selling of an asset if you have dividend received that one also will fall under the investing activities. We go to the third segment, which is the financial activities. In these financial activities, you will get the issue of ordinary shares, if there is any, the repayment of loan. We have the changes in share premium. The share premium can go up or can go down. So that changes of the share premium also will be what? Governed or will be uh, taken care of under the financial activities. We have the repayment of loan. We have to check in the previous year and the current year, what are the values of loan? Is there any changes in uh, account here? And also, definitely, the last one is the dividend paid. Dividend paid to the shareholders. Dividend paid is a cash outflow. So we account under the financial activities. We account under financial activities. So those are the major ones. There are uh, others which will come up as per the question. But these are the major ones. Now, go back to this question, April 2024. If you look at the last note in that question, we have been given depreciation. We have been given depreciation. We have been given depreciation here. That is the last note we have been told. Depreciation charge to the a statement of profit and loss for the year ending the default December 2023 as follows. We have that 4 million and 58 million. So if you add the two, 34 plus 58 will give you uh, 92 million. So these are in millions. Don't forget these are in million. And then we have the interest paid. We have the interest paid. If you go to the additional information number five, if you go to additional information number five, we have been told interest expense charges that just the statement of profit and loss for the year ended that first December 2023 was uh, 38.4 million, 38.4 million. So you bring it here uh, that uh, dividend uh, interest paid and also less down here as interest paid, interest paid, as interest paid. But we go to the, uh, we go to the, the working capital. Working capital, we are looking at the inventories, the receivables and payable. Inventories for the 2022, as per the question, we have 222 million, that is for two, uh, 2023 and uh, 2022. 2023, we have three or six million. So we put more uh, of inventory. Our inventory has goes up. 
which means you acquire more individually. That is the cash outflow. That's why we are lessing uh, 84, 84 million. That is the change, 84 million. And then you go to the receivable. Receivable we have in the last 2022, 256.8 million minus the current one, which is 268, which also has a cash outflow of 7.2 million. Remember when receivables or data goes up, the data stay with the cash. Instead of uh, giving us the cash, they decided to what? To, uh, to stay with our cash. And that one will make us to lose some cash, which is 7.2. We have the payable. Payable for the last financial year 2022, my good learners, is 204. The current financial year 2023 is 288. So also, uh, from 204 to 288, which means our payable has goes up. We are holding the cash of our debt creditors. We are not paying our creditors, which will increase our cash flow, which will increase our cash flow by 84 million. By 84 million. And uh, those are the direct adjustments which you can get without uh, struggling. We go to the note one. Note one, we have been told. Read with me, not one. Not one, we have been told a manufacturing with the netbook value of 12 million, original cost of 48 million, was sold for 18 million. Now, the question we need to ask ourselves here before we answer that question is the, the statement there, the balance sheet there, is it the netbook value or the ghost value? Definitely, they are in netbook value. So, that cost of 48 million is not necessary for us. We need to take the netbook value. So we compare the netbook value of this uh, machine of 12 million and they sold for 18 million. So there is a profit of what? 6 million. So that is the profit on disposal. So we have profit of disposal here, which is 12. We have to put the ink 12 minus 12 minus 18, which will give us 6 million. It will give us 6 million. So let me check for ink a few minutes. So after getting all these, the working capital, then we let the interest paid, which is that 8.4, then the, the tax paid. The tax paid, my good learners, you have to open the tax account. You have to open the tax account. How do we open the tax account? Look at uh, the corporate tax. We have been told the corporate tax for 2022 for 2022 is 129 million, and for the current year for the current year 2023 is 188 million. So for 2022, you credit that one as the balance brought forward. You debit this 198 as the balance carried forward, and then you credit what uh, was the the tax for the year which they have been provided or they have provided you in note two. Corporate tax for the year ended at the first December 2023 was 80 million. So we have uh, 129 plus 80, 80, 80 million minus 120 or minus 198, which will give you 11 million as the tax paid. This one is the balancing figure and it is in the, in the debit side of the tax account the debit side of the tax account. Then we move to the investing activities. We move to the investing activities, which we have the cash paid to acquire machinery. So we have the cash paid to acquire machinery of what? 144 million, 144 million. So you have to do uh, account for this 144 million. You have to open an account for this 144 million. How will you uh, know this? is 144 million. It is very simple. Open the plant and machinery. So open the plant and machinery, which I think you can be able to see here. I write here, are you able? Yeah, I think even this side, I can write. So you have the debit and credit, the debit and, and credit, the debit and credit, right? So for machinery, for machinery, we have the balance put forward, which is, uh, 450 million, 450 million as the balance brought forward. The balance carried forward is 582 million as per the question, is 482 million 
as per the question. And then remember, we dispose of this a disposal account of 12 of me of 12 of million. So the different. So if you add the two, if you add the two, will give you the total of what? Five for, for uh 94. So take this minus this, we get 144 as the balancing figure, which will be what? Our cash paid to acquire this machinery. That is the cash outflow. That is the cash outflow. Then we go for, for furniture. We go for furniture also. We go for the furniture. The furniture, we add the balance brought forward 66 million. The balance brought forward 66 million and then balance carried forward 84 million, 84 million. And then uh, we have disposed 18 million. We have disposed 18 million. We have disposed 18 million. So add the two. So if you add the two, we get the total of 102 million, 102 million, which will come also this side, 102 million. The difference between the two will give us uh, that six million. So this is the cash paid to acquire a furniture which is the cash outflow, I uh, put it here as the cash outflow, as a cash outflow. And then we have the cash received for sold over a furniture and the cash received from uh, sold or what? Uh, the machinery and the furniture. That one they have given you direct in the note one. Note one, they have given you that one. So that those are the direct cash flow. Then we go back to the investment or the short-term investment. Look at the 2022 for the short-term investment. We add zero a short term investment but for 2023 we have 20 27.6 million so which means we use more money to acquire more short term investment which is the cash outflow and that's why i put here as the cash outflow as the cash outflow which if i add this plus this plus this plus this plus this the others are minus i will be able to get the net cash flow from the investing activities or 176.6 million, 176.6 million. That is the third segment. That is the third segment, my good learners. We go to the, uh, that is the second segment, sorry. We go to the third segment, the third segment, which is financial activities, which is financial activities, which is financial activities. So go back to the, uh, Equities and liabilities, you will be able to find out for these financial activities. If we go to the equity and liabilities, the first one, equity, look at the ordinary share capital. 2022, we add 600 million, and then 2023, we have 900 million. So the difference is uh, three, 300 million, which is the cash outflow, which is the cash outflow. Look at the share premium. Look at the share premium. Oh, yeah. Let's see the share premium. We add 90 million. And at the closing year of the current year 2023, we have 210 million. So the difference is the cash outflow of 120 million. Of 120 million. And then we have the repayment of the ventures. We have the ventures there. Yes, we have the ventures. 2022, we add 300 million, but now we have 180 million. So the difference is a decrease in, in debentures, which means we paid more debentures in the current financial year, which uh, we paid, that is 120, 120, we paid 120. And then look at the bank loan, go to the current liabilities, go to the uh, current liability or non current liabilities. We have bank loan. In 2022, we add 120 million. The current year, we have zero. What does that mean? We paid that full amount. So that's why we have the repayment of loan of 120,000, of 120,000. And then what about the dividend? What about the dividend? Is there any note which is guiding us on the dividend? Yes. Go to the note three. The proposed dividend for the year ended at the 1st December 2023 were paid during the year ended at the 1st December 2023. So the proposed dividend for 2022 was paid this year. Let's go back to the what? That current period we see. How much was that dividend? Look at, uh, 
the current liabilities proposed dividend for 2022 is 145 is 145 and it is the cash outflow now we have the cash flow from the three segments we have from the operating activities we have the cash flow from the financing activity uh, the investing activities and we have the cash flow from financing activities now we need to go uh, we finalize this cash flow let's now finalize the cash the cash flow let's finalize the cash flow the last part is uh, to get the cash and cash equivalent for the year so cash flow for the year we will take the first cash flow from the operating activities which we we add 72.8 billion plus the negative cash or this is the cash outflow from the investing activities which is 176.26 and then we add the cash inflows the positive from the financing activities which will be able to get the cash flow for the year of 31.2 million then after that you come to the cash and cash equivalent at the beginning of the year cash and cash equivalent at the beginning of the year how can we get this cash and cash equivalent for the uh, beginning of the year we have the bank loan of 120 million this this bank loan is the cash inflow is the cash inflow if you take the loan what are the double entry for loan you debit the bank and you credit the loan account so we have 120 million as the cash inflow and then we cut down to there the cash in hand we have 1.2 million as our cash in hand balance so we add back that 1.2 million as cash in hand and then we subtract the bank overdraft which we have look at the bank loan or the bank overdraft under the current liabilities we have 84 million as the bank overdraft so we will subtract that bank overdraft for us to get what that is that is 7.2 million as the cash and cash equivalent at the beginning of the of the year of the year so if you add the two that is the cash flow for the year which is that 1.2 million plus the cash and cash equivalent at the beginning of the year you will be able to arrive at 68.4 million. This 68.4 million should be equal to the current balance of the uh, financial year 2023. Let's confirm our balance sheet. If we have 84.8 million, go back to the current assets. If you look at the current asset, we have 84.4 million, which is the same with this, which is the same with this. So that's how we prepare the cash flow statement. That's how we prepare the cash flow statement. Uh, make sure that you leave the comment uh, down there. You also get the uh, callers on our numbers there, which have been provided for inquiry and also for uh, further on this uh, class revision, on this other revision. That question itself, that question alone is giving you 20 marks. That question is giving you 20 marks for free. I know most of you might ask, why is it that we have not captured the profit before tax? The examiner has not given us the profit before before tax. Maybe they add a zero. They add zero. That's why we didn't capture under the profit uh, under the first operating activities. So that is the cash flow statement. That is the cash flow statement. Next, we do uh, company accounts. 